Hello guys, so welcome back to our class today. Today's class promises to be a, an interesting one because we want to determine the specific heat capacity of a liquid by using the electrical method. In our previous class, we did the mixture method and in this particular class, we're going to be determining the specific heat capacity of a liquid using the electrical method. To achieve that, we have here a calorimeter. This is an electric calorimeter with an immersion heater or a heat heating coil in it, as you see here, with also a thermometer that is already inserted in it. So you can see that the thermometer is already reading the room temperature of about 30 degrees Celsius, as you're seeing here. All right. So to also proceed, we have other apparatus that we can use to conduct this experiment like the chemical beam balance which you see here we're going to use that to determine the mass of water that we'll be using for this experiment we also have the ammeter 0 to 5 amperes we have the voltmeter 0 to 5 ampere we have a 12 volt battery here that we're going to use and then we have a rheostat the essence of the rheostat is to help us maintain a steady current throughout the experiment and then the key to cut off current where it is necessary then finally we need a stopwatch to measure the time during which the current is passed on the heater. Of course, this is the water for which we want to find its um, specific heat capacity. So these are all the apparatus that we'll be using to conduct this experiment. But before we proceed, we would first of all want to find three things. One, the mass of the water that we want to use. Then we we'll also find the initial temperature of the water before we even begin the experiment. So let us find the mass of the water. How do we find the mass of the water? We have a calorimeter here. Let me remove the th thermometer. Right. So we will weigh this calorimeter empty. It is empty as you can see from here. No water inside yet. So let us find, using the chemical balance, and I drop this, the, the mass in gram is about 232.8 grams. This is the mass of the calorimeter when it is empty. Now, we are going to record this and then pour water up to about two thirds of the container and then we remeasure it again so that we can find the difference which gives us the mass of the water. So, the mass of the calorimeter empty is 232.9 as you are seeing now. So, let us pour water up to two thirds. So, here we remove the lid and then we pour water here. Here is water, we pour water up to two thirds of the calorimeter in it. So here, we have water up to two thirds at the moment, so you can see here. So let's keep this aside and put back this. So you can confirm that it's still at zero. So we we'll drop this so that we'll find the mass with water. So the mass here has given us 353 grams. So it means we are going to proceed by finding the difference and that will in turn give us the mass of water. And when that is done, we we'll get the mass of water to be 120.1 gram. So that is what the mass of the water is and that's what we're going to note it uh, down for. Then we're going to use this value um, during the calculation to get the specific heat capacity. So secondly, we're going to now insert our thermometer and find out now you can see that the thermometer is making contact with the water. Now, we want to find the initial temperature of the thermometer. The initial temperature of water, as you can see here, is at 31 degrees Celsius. So this is the temperature of water, and we're going to use this also. I record it as theta 1 in this particular experiment. So 31 degrees Celsius for theta 1. Now, now that we have measured the mass of water and the initial temperature, we are going to now proceed to connect the experiment the way you are seeing it um, in the diagram. You can see that um, we need to do the connections, you can see. So check the diagram there, whatever you have there, that is the way we are going to connect this. And then once that is done, we will now take our reading. Okay, so we are set to commence the experiment. Now, uh, it's what you to note that I have set the rheostat at a point where it will give me the maximum current, which is between two to three amperes so the reason for setting it before plugging the key is such that um there won't be um 
any effect in the heating of the content, right? Because once I plug in this, current will flow into through the heater and the water will already start boiling. But I want that to happen simultaneously with my starting the, st the stop clock so that I won't uh, be reading behind schedule. So as you can see, I'm set with the experiment. So I'm quickly going to plug in this and start my stop clock while I watch the current increase. Also, I'm also meant to simultaneously note the ammeter reading and note, record it and then the voltmeter reading and also record it so that I will use it during the experiment. Recall that initial temperature is also noted at 0.31 degrees Celsius. So we need this information to get the accurate result. So we are set for the experiment. So I will now put in the key and do all of this simultaneously. So let's go. So here the key is up. My stop clock is on. Take note of this two amperes, as you see. Take note of this. This is 4.1 amperes. You can see that my stop clock is already reading. And then we'll watch that the temperature is going to increase now from this 31 degrees Celsius within a short period of time. So we are going to spend just three minutes in trying to find out what would be the value of the change in temperature. So this stop clock is 30. Yes, so this is 30 seconds already. So it means that another um, oscillation will give us one minute complete. So we are getting to the first minute already. So So let's just be patient and watch as it unfolds. So this is one minute gone now. So let us see whether there's any difference in the ammeter reading. So here you can see that there is a slight difference already. So this is at point 0.32. You can see now at 32. Initially, it was at 31, meaning that the heater is responding to the current. So, let's keep going. This is just about 1 minute 30 seconds as we are just here. So, we, we've gone to half of the time that we intend to, to get to. So, the, heat, the heater is on. So, we'll measure... So this is still the voltmeter and the ammeter there, and then the real start the cell. So let's check as we approach this second minute. So this is two minutes now. Let us see whether there's any change. So you can see that it's almost at the 33, almost, not there yet, almost at the 33 degrees Celsius mark, as you're seeing there. So let us see by the time it completes the third minute, whether it will get there. But meanwhile, we have here 2 minutes, 30 seconds. So we have 30 more seconds to go. So as we get set to wind up, let us find out what we have at the moment on the thermometer. So our time is up, three minutes. What is the thermometer reading? The thermometer reading is exactly at 33 degrees Celsius, as you see it there. So we have taken note of our time and then the reading. So here is 33.5. You can see it there, right? 33.5. So that's the final reading for three minutes. So now, I can now stop and unplug my key. So, we will now tabulate all these values that we have gotten and then use it to deduce the specific heat capacity of this particular liquid. All right, so here is the summary of all uh, we have done so far. The mass of the calorimeter which we got is 232.9 gram. And then the mass of the calorimeter plus water we got is 353.0 gram. Then the mass of the water 
is 120.1 grand. That is, if we do the subtraction between the first two, we'll get 120.1 gram. Then the initial temperature that we recorded was 31 degrees Celsius. And then the final temperature we recorded was just approximately 34 degrees Celsius. And then the current um, or current reading on the um, ammeter is 2.0 amperes, while the voltmeter reading is 4.1 volts. Then we passed on this current for three minutes. If we use the formula, uh, IVT is equal to MC theta 2 minus theta 1 to deduce the specific heat capacity, where C there represents the specific heat capacity of the liquid. Making C subject formula, we are going to get IVT all over M bracket theta 2 minus theta 1. And then if we successfully substitute the values that we have there, we have that the current 2 times volt 4.1 times the time, which we convert to seconds, which is 3 times 60, all over the mass, which we have as 120.1, then the change in temperature would be 3. By the time we punch this, we are going to get 1,476 1, divided by 360.3. And if we divide that, our final answer is 4.1 joules per gram per celsius note that the standard value for the specific heat capacity of water is 4.2 joules per gram per celsius so you can see that our value is exact and accurate so um this experiment um is actually very simple and direct i would uh, encourage you to try it on your own and then um, you can comment and tell us the challenges that you encounter in conducting this experiment and be sure that we will reply to help you achieve that. Thank you for being there with us. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Try as much as possible to also put on the notification button so that anytime we post, you will be able to receive. Thank you very much for being there. God bless you.